Hi, and welcome back to Not Tomorrow's World. <laughs> but it's a really good idea. I miss Tomorrow's World. So let's do some news updates on interesting 21st century tech tonight. Nuclear power. We all know that millions are spent on giant nuclear power plants, but maybe there's another way. I'm Roger Harabin, the BBC's Energy and Environment Analyst, and I want to tell you about something that the experts think may be the future of nuclear power. Not huge like this one behind me. The future of nuclear may be small. Let me demonstrate with the aid of a few bags of rice. So this bag of rice is my typical nuclear power station. Absolutely huge, takes years to build, costs often overrun, and frankly in the West nowadays few people want to throw in squillions of pounds to finance this sort of thing. So perhaps the answer is this. Small nuclear. A reactor a tenth the size of this one, but still capable of generating power. So small, in fact, that you can put it on a truck and deliver it by truck. OK, clearly these two don't equal the output of that, but there's a simple solution. Just buy some more. Stack them up side by side. And in the end, they're generating as much as this old boy. Now, there are problems, of course. There's still no solution to nuclear waste in the UK. And what's more, these baby reactors won't be built in large numbers until the 2030s and 2040s. And we've got to start tackling climate change right now, the scientists tell us. But when it comes to nuclear, it does look as though small in future may be beautiful. <laughs> that was a until now moment that tomorrow's world always used to do. And the story is... Rolls-Royce are bringing out mini nuclear power stations instead of having the giant station that we all love and, no, we don't, we hate. <laughs> Rolls-Royce, who build mini nuclear power plants for nuclear submarines, are suggesting that we could have them in our backyard. One Rolls-Royce power station could power the city of Leeds or charge 88,000 cell phones. Whatever. <laughs> but there's no talk about how they're going to get rid of the nuclear waste. Oh, there is actually. If you read right at the bottom, hang on, focus. <laughs> if you read right at the bottom, it says the waste will be recycled back to other assets. I guess they're kind of saying it will go to cell field and be turned into plutonium for atomic weapons or put into their submarines. Who knows? Anyway, moving swiftly on in a revealing report on climate change. Sorry, people out here. I just have to do this story. This is horrific. It turns out that 65%, I mean, that's more than half, of all anti-climate change tweets are produced by bots. I'm not quite sure what a bot is, but I guess it's not a human. 65%. Welcome to the modern world. And in tonight's final item, we're going to discuss drones. Yeah. I want to put a plea out to developers and researchers to come up with this idea. Wouldn't it be cool to have a micro drone in your bag or your pocket that when you're cycling along through the beautiful countryside, you could throw up in the air. It follows you, circles you, and comes back and lands and you put it away in your pocket. I mean, I think it's nearly there. I worry about sending a thousand dollar drone up, cycling around and it kind of goes boof into a tree. Not me, but the drone goes boof into a tree. Question to viewers, is there such a thing out there? A kind of a 
follow you, you know, cycling, motorbiking mini drone that just follows you and comes back when it's done its shot? I don't know. I would love one. And that's tonight's roundup on Not Tomorrow's World. Stay tuned for more.